All right, so recently Lenovo showed off its prototype for a PC with a foldable display. And while a lot of comments here on YouTube were actually pretty positive after watching and understanding it, well, there were some people who just don't get it. So today I'm gonna give you five reasons why you're wrong about the foldable PC. Stay tuned. All right, first off, before I get started, small rant here. It's a foldable PC, folks. Stop telling me foldable PCs are laptops. No one calls a laptop a foldable PC. That's never happened. Doesn't make sense. I get it, it's a joke, it's pretty funny. At the same time, we're just gonna call it foldable PC. Why? Because saying foldable screen PC sounds stupid, it's too long, and I just like saying foldable PC. Plus everybody calls a Samsung phone a foldable phone, so they can call it a foldable phone. Well, we can call a foldable PC. I mean, we did have flip phones back in the 2000s, or did I imagine that? Anyway, let's get to those five reasons. All right, number five, speaking of Samsung, the screen will break. So as a lot of people pointed out, Foldable screens have, well, maybe some issues. The idea of it opening and closing multiple times can result in the screen failing. This is actually a long lesson that a lot of people have learned with electronics that the more moving parts you have, those are more points for failure. And there is some truth to that. That said, I would have quickly jumped to the conclusion that LG's version, after LG is making one here for Lenovo, is gonna have the same issues as Samsung. And even if they did, folks, let's go through the history of technology. Actually, let's not, there's just not enough time. But if you go through at least some of it, whether it was sending rockets to the moon or electric cars or even smartphones themselves, they all went through that initial stage of basically sucking. I mean, rockets blew up, people died, electric cars didn't go very far, and smartphones in 2005 were big, chunky, clunky things, unlike the smallest felt devices we have today. So the fact is, foldable displays, yeah, might have some issues early on, but those are solvable engineering issues. There's nothing inherently wrong with foldable displays, and scientists and engineers will eventually figure out how to make them more reliable. If you don't believe me, go back to LCDs in the early 2000s. I had a few LCD monitors. They all had dead pixels. In fact, when you bought a monitor, they would actually tell you five to six dead pixels is normal. It's not a flaw. You have to live with it. That's the way it was. When was the last time you got a phone or any device that had a dead pixel on it? They figured that stuff out. But this was a major problem for about 10 years for LCD displays. So foldable screens may have some issues early on, but this is no reason to throw out the entire category. They can figure this out, folks. All right, number four, it costs too much. There's no doubt that this device from Lenovo and other companies when they make them will cost more than a traditional laptop. There's just a lot more going on there. And that screen tech is pretty expensive, at least for now. Again, no reason to throw out the whole category though. All technology starts out more expensive and it trickles down. Smartphones used to be super expensive. Then they came down a price. Then they went back up in price, so that doesn't matter either. If you go back years ago, the first Tesla that came out, the Roadster, cost $250,000. Then the Model S came out and it was, well, cheaper. It was like 120,000 or 100,000. And now the Model 3 is out and you can pick it up for 40,000. That's why I got one, because the price came down and that's how all technology works. I'm pretty sure within five years, foldable displays will be very normal and will just be par for the course and none of us will be complaining about the price. Number three, there's no physical keyboard. And I actually get this, and I'm very sympathetic to it, but and we didn't convey this enough in the video, and I apologize for that. There is a physical keyboard that ships with that Lenovo device, and we can show it to you in a few photos. Now, it was a strict prototype, and it is a Bluetooth keyboard. I will say that what we show you and can show you is not all that there's to it. There's some stuff that Lenovo doesn't want us to show you that they're gonna reveal later on. I'll just say when we can show you, you're gonna be like, that's super clever. In fact, there are patents floating around, even from Microsoft, that show how this technology can be melded with physical keyboards, and it's actually kind of interesting. But yeah, touch typing, though, will get better as well. So if you like using soft keyboards, I really wouldn't worry about it. Don't forget, when the iPhone first came out, even I laughed that off. We were living in a world with physical keyboards, and I thought, no way could this be good on a phone. And I was actually kind of right for the first few years but that stuff eventually caught up. And now we all have phones with digital keyboards on them and it's kind of worked itself out. Again, this is an engineering problem. It will be figured out, but there is a physical keyboard that comes with this device and you haven't seen all of it yet. 
Number two, Windows 10 sucks on tablets. Again, I'm sympathetic toward this. Ever since Windows 8, Windows 10 has just never been as good on tablets. The good news for us is this is actually a Windows 10 device. Now, Lenovo isn't saying this. All they want us to tell you is it's a device that's basically built around the Windows experience. And yeah, the device we showed you is running a version of Windows 10, but all our sources tell you, and the weird wording from Lenovo should tell you, this is gonna be actually a Windows Core OS device, specifically Windows Lite. Now, if you don't know what that is, we have plenty of articles and even videos explaining it. We'll show you a few images of what it looks like, but this is a next generation version of Windows built for light computing and devices like this. It's only for new device experiences. And for those who think Windows Lite is gonna mean it's not very capable, it does support traditional x86 and Win32 programs. So that will be done through basically a virtualization system. I'm getting a little into a lot of details here. Microsoft will cover this whenever they announce this. But this actually isn't a Windows 10 device, meaning the operating system has actually been built for foldable and dual screen devices. Now, whether it's actually amazing on tablets, we'll have to wait and see there, but I'm just gonna say that the software and the hardware were built together for this device, and we haven't seen the software part yet. And finally, the number one reason why you're wrong, there's no point to this device. So I've heard a lot of this from a lot of users and I kind of get it. Sometimes you see a device and you think that has no role in my life. I do not want that. And that's a very legit position. If you saw this video with this foldable PC and you thought that's dumb, I have no use for that, that's fine. Not a problem. However, don't deny that this may have value for other users out there. There are a lot of people, especially students, architects, engineers, artists, business people, who really look forward to a device like this, especially if you're very much into inking. Now, inking is a controversial kind of topic. People my age and older aren't really into inking that much. Students, on the other hand, absolutely love it. In fact, a lot of schools now are using Chromebooks and Windows 10 PCs with inking support. Heck, even Apple is getting on board here trying to get iPhones pads into schools, also with the pencil support. There's a whole generation growing up around inking, and there's good reason for it. A lot of research has shown that when you write down something physically versus typing or just watching a video, you memorize it. There's a ton of research on this, folks. And there's a lot of usage of this in schools and those kind of environments. Now, a device like this offers all sorts of new opportunities. It's a much more adaptive device. For instance, you can use it as a clamshell in your lap like a laptop. You can also use it on a desktop by connecting to the Lenovo dock. You can also use it just as a plain old tablet. And if you go back to number two, you have more answers there as to why that may be impressive. There's also just the ability to use it as a book, which again is another unique experience that your PC or laptop can't do, and neither can your tablet. So if you go back to the way two and ones were kind of innovative at the time, this is the next evolution of it. Whether any of that's important to you is up to you. Now, if you're a gamer, you're probably looking at this and saying no big deal, but even there, I would caution, once you throw in something like Microsoft xCloud and game streaming technology, well, well, actually this device actually does become a little bit more interesting. The fact is, even if you don't like this Lenovo prototype, that's totally fine. Lenovo won't be alone here. I do expect Microsoft to have its own device coming out later as well. And I don't see why HP, Dell, or other manufacturers, maybe even Huawei would jump on board. Don't forget, this is a whole new category, just like two-in-one. So there's gonna be a lot of innovation going on here, different sizes, different form factors, different features that may actually entice you. Just remember, a lot of people don't jump on technology when it first comes out. They just don't get it. But then years later, everybody adopts it. People years ago made fun of me for having a smartphone. They didn't get the whole concept of it. Now you're weird if you don't have a smartphone. And that's gonna be a big lesson here to learn from technology. No one sees the point. If you're gonna be one of those people that say, what problem does this solve? That's not a smart answer. Don't be one of those people that says this is a solution to a problem that doesn't exist. That's not actually the reason why technology happens a lot of the time. Technology is about improving experience or offering new experiences and giving you new outlets for expressing yourself. And that's what this device does, at least for some people. But give it a few years, I guarantee you this will become the norm very soon, or at least when Apple does it. All right, those are five reasons why I think you're wrong about the foldable PC. And yes, foldable PC, folks. We're gonna go with that. Now, if you have any comments about this or your own opinions, leave them below and I'll try to respond to them. But yeah, I might get a little snarky here and there. That's just what I do, folks. Otherwise, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, everyone.